we can kind of see through the optics that this is going to be woke. We can see it, man. And you don't believe me? Just watch here in a few seconds. What is happening here? Everyone wants to save the world. They just they just agree. This is crazy, man. Whoever thought that when they announced the Fallout series was coming to Amazon Prime, that we'd be getting Finn 2.0 and a female-led series. I, I'm not interested, bro. I'm not interested in this shit, man. Like, this is ridiculous. This continues to happen. We keep letting these motherfuckers touch the IPs that we like. The IPs that we grew up with. They destroyed Ninja Turtles. They destroyed Marvel. They destroyed DC. They destroyed Power Rangers. They destroyed Last of Us. What else have they destroyed? He-Man. They even destroyed fuck. How do you destroy fucking He-Man? And now here we are. They're destroying Fallout. Now again, I don't want to get too riled up. I don't, because I already know, you can't tell us what just yet. Oh, you see a black guy and a woman on screen and blah, blah. You can't tell me you could have just got a, a normal white guy as a main character of this to be a vault technician or a vault de dweller. But no, we got the one white guy playing the bad guy in the, in the fucking series. And he doesn't even look like the correct bad guy from the games. I don't know when you guys are going to start realizing this shit, bro. So I tweeted this out. I said, the fact that, that all people can talk about is Walton Goggins and their nostalgic music to tell you that they're going to make you fall for the parody of something we love once again. Tell me when I'm telling lies. Because they're going to do it just to push their fucking narrative. I want to talk about this. This has everything to do with what they're doing in Hollywood right now. With and I think that in our industry and in so many creative industries, if you want to look at film and television and any art form, we start treating our core demographics as a fixed and static value, something that does not want to change and something that is locked in place. So despite like the changing face of audiences, despite the changing face of conferences like this one, we still look at our core demographics and say, okay, the there's no such thing. First of all, I, I, and, and the reason why I wanted to talk about this and, and kind of integrate this into the fallout series thing is because this lady and this is from a few years ago but this lady is talking about pretty much infiltrating hollywood and the quote-unquote spaces um in hollywood and, and i think i don't know if i passed it already because i'm not gonna say it in the salt, but um she, i don't know if she already talked about it already but she even mentions the fact that like we need to change uh, white characters, white male, white straight cis male, whatever the fuck she says. Uh, but you guys know what I'm trying to say. White cis male, straight men, and change them into people of color. And because you talk like this, and 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 because you have a laptop and you and you look, nothing against this lady in the way she looks, but you cannot use your racism against white people. And push it into a billion dollar fucking corporation and think that real fans and think that people that can see through your bullshit aren't going to call you out for it. Because this very rhetoric is the reason why we're dealing with the shit that we're dealing with right now in entertainment. They're white, cis, hetero males. And we cater almost exclusively to them. And Who's the fucking fan base? Males. It all depends on what you're talking about. It all depends on what you're doing. This is what I don't... Look, there's a reason why there's no such thing as a Barbie RPG. Because if women, if the vast majority of women were playing video games, or at least young adult women were playing video games, maybe we'd have one. But they don't. This goes back to that video the other day. Uh, where I saw um, uh, the MLB joint, where they started integrating women into the MLB game. They claim that they don't like watching shows and movies where they feel like they're not represented, where they literally don't see 
a black person, but you can still see yourself. That that's why I always get the example of my favorite comic character of all time, my favorite superhero of all time is Batman. Bat Bruce Wayne ain't black. It's not like he puts on the, the, the Batman mask or, or puts on the bat suit and he all of a sudden becomes a nigga. No, no. But I still see myself, at least a little bit of myself, in Bruce Wayne, the character, in Batman and what he actually stands for and what he's doing for the city of fucking Gotham. For some reason, these people sit here and act like that they, they, they've never consumed any kind of enter entertainment prior to 2015. Prior to a race swapped Johnny Storm from Fantastic Four. Or a race swapped Nick Fury in Avengers. So, excuse me if I do get a little, uh, what would be the term? Pissed? Perturbed? Uneasy? When you start blaming white men for your own insecurities. Which is not something that only happens in entertainment. That happens in, in, uh, in black people in general. It happens all the time where black people are saying, oh, yeah, I've never seen myself or I'm so glad we finally get a black so-and-so or black whatever the fuck. And it's like, bro, it's not even like that deep. It's not even about that. How about you, take, how about you pay attention to the character? How about you pay attention to their morals, their personality, their values? And maybe you'll be able to see yourself. And the problem is that we don't just cater to them like, you know, here. Here's something that we think you'll enjoy. We cater to them the way that we cater to like a picky baby. We feed them the same thing that we know that they love and we keep on feeding it. We're like, here you go. We, you love it. Eat this, eat this, eat this. So that then when they get anything else, they react as a picky baby would, which is be like, oh no, thank you. I do not want this. And we've actually done this so long that what we're doing is creating an entire nation of picky babies and they make us scared to deviate from what we actually want to do. Just in case these picky babies don't want to play our games. And we've made a lot of progress. Obviously, like I don't say this to just completely go like, just give up. We've, <laughs> we've screwed it. Um, but I think it's still amazing that I can be seated in a meeting and told that out of 12 characters, we already have one black one. So there can't possibly be a second. <laughs> I get that way too much. And But why are you asking for a second black character? If being black brings nothing to, to, to the table, like this is why I don't understand. This is this is why I talk about the falsehood. This is why I always go back to this whole representation BS. Because you don't care. You really don't. Because if you did care about these act, if you actually cared about the character, you wouldn't be asking to change the race of them. You wouldn't be asking for another black person just to have another black person. That's why we have the problems that we have in these board meetings today. That's why we have the problems that we have when, uh, when, it, when it comes to Congress. That's why, that's why we have the problems uh, that we have when it comes to big corporations and needing to move forward. I was, I was watching Chris Gordy the other day, and he was saying that like nowadays you can't even step on a film set, a film set without having COVID coordinator, intimacy coordinator. Um, it's now a big one. And then it was another one, which I think, oh yeah, the, the DEI representative. Like, huh, we're so fucked. We are so fucked when it comes to the entertainment industry. We forgot what entertainment was even built on. We forgot what these movies were built on. We forgot uh, what it really meant to truly, truly love being a part of film because we're so fixated on everything else. Everything else. We're so fixated on the optics and on representation. Let me ask y'all something. Do y'all not remember Hattie fucking McDaniel? I studied her when I was in college, when I was in acting class. And yet, you know, it's funny. The exact same uh, professor that I was that uh, that I was studying Hattie McDaniel, uh, the exact class that I was in, that very same professor. Two months later in that semester, tried to say that there's no represent there's uh, uh, very little representation of black women in the uh, in the in the film industry. And that was one of the reasons why I dropped out of college. I mean, it wasn't one of the main, but that was clearly one of the things that kind of I was just like, bro, 
I just did a paper on Hattie McDaniel, who won an Oscar. First black woman to win an Oscar before I was born, before my fucking parents were even born. So how the fuck are we sitting here in 2024 talking about not having representation of black women? That's why I got blocked from Viola Davis a couple years ago, uh, because I called her out on her bullshit when she said, oh, black women are not represented. I'm like, fam. Before you were even born, Viola Davis, before you were even thought of, Hattie McDaniel had already won a fucking Oscar. Did we not get set it off in 1996 or 7? Did Lynn Whitfield and Martin Lawrence not lead a movie called Thin Line Between Love and Hate in the mid-90s? That just didn't happen, huh? That just didn't fucking happen. So this is why I go back to the fallouts of the world, why I go back to the Last of Us uh, series, where they dedicated an entire episode to something that was a side project. I mean, not a side project, but a side quest in Last of Us, a, a guy who was a gay dude who was a side character in Last of Us in the game. They dedicated an entire episode just to show us a gay love story to watch. Nick Offerman, a dude who I loved and adored in, uh, uh, not The Office, um, and not The Community. I didn't watch The Community, but I, uh, Parks and Rec. Loved and adored his character in Parks and Rec. And then he goes to Last of Us, and we watch an entire episode of him kissing another dude on the mouth and getting butt-fucked for 45 minutes. And then he wins a fucking Emmy for that? And then during his Emmy speech, he wants to start spouting out even more bullshit and saying... Uh, the gay, the gays are not represented and blah, blah. I'm so glad where really do we ever get to see gay love stories? Are you kidding me? That's fam. That's like half the shit I've been talking about for the past five years that I've been on YouTube is talking about how we don't need any more of these fucking, there's a gay love story in literally every single show on Netflix. There's a gay love story or literally on every single show on HBO max gay love stories Literally on every fucking show on Amazon Prime. Everywhere you turn, there's gay love stories. So what the fuck? What the fuck are you talking about? There's no representation. Just like when I look at uh, this black lady right here, and she's talking about lack of representation, uh, and we need to, we need to have more black people in this and black people in that. Fam, go right down to BET and spew out that bullshit. You're, you're going into these spaces. You're going into these big corporations. You're bumble fucking everything up in the name of diversity when there's already diversity and there's already been diversity longer than you've been alive. John Leguizimo has no room to talk when it comes to Latin representation. He, he, was, he owned the 90s and the early 2000s. George Lopez owned the late 90s and 2000s. And if you want to go back even further than that, Selma Hayek, Jennifer Lopez. You want to go back even further than that? We'll go Cheech and Chong, Cheech Marin. That's the 80s and the 90s. So you cannot tell me that there is no representation when it comes to these people, bro. I grew up on the shit. LL Cool J was in Halloween H2O. That was the 90s, y'all. So are we going to sit here and say that black men are not getting any representation? Black men were leading movies in the 70s. Action Jackson. Or maybe, maybe that, was the, uh, that was the 80s. I mean, come on, y'all. Come on. I, I, I can go on for days. I, I, I can sit here and talk for hours and give y'all example after example after example. Now, if you may think that this is all, you know, oh, corn, you're, you're talking a whole lot of nothing. You're doing, you're saying all this all because of Fallout, all because of one Fallout trailer. Yes, because y'all still don't get it, man. This is bait and switch to the fucking T. I know a little bit about Fallout and remember a little bit from the games that I played. The two and a half Fallout games that I played. And this shit pisses me off to no fucking end. Because they are really, they are really going to make y'all fall for this shit. And I saw the comments. I saw the comments. 
Oh my God, this looks amazing. Walton Goggins is going to eat. Oh, just took the Nuka Cola out my face. Blah, blah, blah. Very promising. Can't wait to watch. Thank you, uh, Expedito. Expedito, pause. I'm sorry, y'all. This don't interest me one bit. Like I said, visually it looks great. I like the uh, I like the, uh, the the suits as well. And look, she she ain't hard. To, I mean, it's not like she's very easy on the eyes. The main character is very easy on the eyes. Don't get me wrong, but again, you're another fucking large IP that we're trying to center around a fucking female. For what? And then you got Finn two point Starts out with the bad guys and and becomes good and uh, 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 probably it's probably going to be some kind of story of oppression in there. I will say this on a Fallout sense, I'm glad it didn't show the Death Claw in in the trailer just yet. So I, I'm glad to keep it as a surprise for the show. That's pretty cool. But again, I may not even watch this fucking show. And they're releasing all the episodes at once, which means it's going to be dog shit. Like the same thing that they did with uh, Echo a few months ago. They dropped all the episodes at once. Everybody talked about it for a weekend, about how shitty that show was for a weekend. And nobody ever talked about or even thought of Echo ever again. And I feel like that's the same thing that's going to happen to Fallout. But let me know what you guys think. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe. All that good stuff. It's your boy, Corn.